Good day, everyone. Anyway, I just thought I'd start sharing my thoughts on this platform, uh, the internet, whatever. Steam it. I'm loving Steam it because uh, you make money on Steam it. And it's a place that uh, seems to be fit for intelligent discussions and uh, topics. I'm not uh, overwhelmed by um, memes. And uh, maybe I'm just part of the wrong groups, but I haven't seen too much flat earth stuff either, which is uh, which is uh, nice. But I just started wanting to share my thoughts because I've been involved in a lot of things. Uh, my eyes, I guess, were opened like many people, like uh, after after 9/11 and uh, just doing your own research and that, and you know. I don't think it really comes down to whether you believe uh, they were taken down by hijackers or whether they were taken down, you know, as an inside job and everybody can have their own opinions on that, but the point is there's no way that what you were told is accurate. Uh, you know, there's it doesn't add up. and. What I always find funny here is, you know, you have the conspiracy theorists and you have the skeptics. And, you know, I hate to be the one to burst everybody's bubble on the skeptic side, but you're not a skeptic because you have a belief. You know, if you believe that it was, you know, terrorists, then you're harboring a belief. And if you believe that it was uh, an inside job, then you're also harboring a belief. Both are conspiracy theories. And either way, each is a conspiracy. So, you know, I hear about, oh, conspiracies are retarded. And this and that, and that. Well, guess what? The way I see it, really, the world, and the business world especially, is, that's conspiracy. Conspiracy and business is synonymous. I mean, that's the whole deal, is trying to keep information from your competition and controlling information and... You know, like you're doing all that stuff because that's 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 just nature of business. You gotta have the upper hand on the other guy. And so there you go. That's conspiracy. Conspiracies. I mean you had conspiracies all your life. Santa Claus is a conspiracy, you know? And one that <laughs> just about everybody goes along with. And all the rest of them. Conspiracies is just human nature. Okay? But if you believe in something don't call yourself a skeptic. You're not a skeptic. You're a believer in something. Okay, the skeptic, he's the guy that's not convinced of either one yet. That's the skeptic. So, now that I got that off my chest, I'm just coming up here to get some water. Some good spring water. And I come up here often enough because the water that we drink in the city even though in Moncton which is where I live uh, we're pretty lucky because there's no fluoride although in the last little bit the government here the New Brunswick government is pushing hard they've got stuff on all over the place buses everything we need fluoride back in our water we you know we had a town hall meeting where the lady actually said we had a, a bunch of dental people came uh, dentists in support of fluoride and the lady said probably the most insane thing I've ever heard she says I love fluorosis I love fluorosis if I see fluorosis in there I know that that kid has had a healthy dose of fluoride well <laughs> healthy dose of fluoride you don't have to do a lot of research to find out fluoride isn't healthy, and especially not how they put in the water. Now, there's a certain amount of fluoride, as I understand it, that's natural. So it's out there, and here's the spring. Uh, see if you can see it. So anyway, this is where I'm getting my water today, and. Uh, 
right out of the ground and it tastes amazing and as soon as you drink it you feel it like you're just like zzz, 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 you know you get the, the life it's living water anyway that's what that's going on right here in Moncton we fought and fought and fought and they got all the water all the fluoride out of the water I mean you still have the other stuff though there's chlorine and all that so you know so I come out here to get water because it's clean and it's straight out of the ground and it's not just give me some water with my water man I don't need all the fucking chemicals and junk I'm just and you know I, I'm not naive like I mean I've been to places where you, you know you can't drink the water and that's not good either uh, out of the top and I mean we can drink it here out of the top um, but the point is it's just you know water is, is, is the essence of life like, you know. and what it is too is it's forced medication uh, you know you're giving people uh, something that they don't necessarily want to be given uh, now you know I've heard in other documentaries or documentaries and such that you know fluoride was the origins of it go back to concentration camps and stuff uh, by the Russians and then adopted by the Germans and you know it made the people passive so is that what's going on you know it seems I don't know you know you look at the main ingredients in Prozac and stuff and uh, and you find sodium chloride and all these things and you know what's that in the water so I'm, I'm avoiding saying too many facts because the thing is I don't know all the facts I don't know all the facts because everything everything I've learned about it really has been from the internet and you know I've done enough discerning that I'm quite convinced <laughs> fluoride is, is terrible for you and you know to be able to even handle it you need a hazmat suit or anything so it'll eat through concrete it'll eat through metal but it's perfectly fine to go and put that in the water <laughs> the most toxic thing on earth that isn't radioactive to, for humans. There, I got about four liters now. I also just quit smoking cigarettes last week, so I have to make a point of this now. Uh, I want to make a point of it. You know, drink a good, healthy water, purge my system uh, you know, of toxins and stuff like this. And I'm telling you, like, I mean, anybody that knows or has seen. The studies from Dr. Uh, uh, Emoto, I believe is his name, with the water molecules and stuff, and showing that, you know, water has a uh, memory. Water has memory. And uh, it seems the water that we see in the uh in the reservoirs and stuff and what we get in a, through the tops is really it's dead water it's that it's not it's not alive hold on i gotta put my seatbelt on there's another guy behind me getting water so water how good is the water around you how good is the water in your town and uh, gotta watch here Where you live i mean i think maybe the quality of life can be uh, where you live can be directly linked to the quality of your water maybe but anyway i wanted to bring that up because uh that's just the kind of thing that's on my mind these days now i was talking about waking up and all that and for anybody who's kind of walked down that rabbit hole it becomes a pretty lonely place it's hard to relate to people after a while uh, you know I, I, I work in television and I haven't watched cable 
television in eight years, I think, now, because I can't stand commercials. Like, I can't, there's nothing that irritates me more than commercials when it comes to visual entertainment. Uh, I've been making documentaries, working in the documentary field for 20 years or so. Before that, I uh, was studying to be a, a psychologist and I was studying a lot of philosophy and that's what led to doing this because at one point I had made a video on freedom and that was a, that was the, the project so I made this this video on freedom and I knew a couple guys who were tattoo artists and this is back like 1997 or 6 uh, so yeah, these guys are tattoo artists. They had fangs and stuff. One of them worked at a uh, strip bar, and both of them were going out with strippers, or at least one of them was. And who I inter wound up interviewing her more than anything else because she she was interesting. And although I interviewed them all, uh, you know, we uh, I interviewed this stripper, but what you know, the, is she more free than the average person uh, because of the lifestyle she chose? Um, this is back, you know, I'm younger than I'm 22. This is 20 years ago. <laughs> Over 20 years ago. But anyway, I got an A plus on that and showed it to my friend who worked at then at the uh, the Weather Network here in Moncton. And now he's gone on. Now he works for uh, SwearNet and the Trailer Park Boys. Uh, but he told me I was missing my calling there, and I and I kind of agreed because I was very interested in that. I didn't. I get the TV thing just seemed like, you know, like something unattainable. Like it just, it, you know, you became where I live anyway. You went to work at the train station or, or factory or whatever. Like there wasn't. That just seemed like bigger than life a little bit, but it wasn't. And I went and took a course for a couple of years, and I learned, uh, you know, how to make television and film, and the rest is history. After that, I did. I probably worked on a hundred, oh no, <laughs> hundreds of documentaries now, and and productions, and and you know, got to do some pretty cool stuff there. And I've had a couple of pet projects too. Almost everything I do is for broadcast, and but I have, you know, made a couple of films online. You can look up. There's one called uh, Healing Cancer with Cannabis, and that's the story of Rick Simpson, uh, and those of you who don't know who Rick Simpson is, he's a guy that, from Amherst, Nova Scotia, that kind of accidentally, uh, well not accidentally, but, well yeah, he accidentally cured his, his own cancer, but he was with cannabis oil, but what he was originally looking for was just relief from these, uh, uh, from the concussion, he had this like ongoing concussion, that uh, I forget the technical term for it there, but it's basically just a ring in the in the head that never goes away and a lot of people wind up blowing their heads off and Rick was no exception he almost did but uh, in pursuing his own healing and being frustrated with the doctors and their pills and all that kind of stuff he uh, he turned to cannabis you know because he saw things on TV he saw nature things where the people you know were taking cannabis and it was doing a lot of good for them and so, but is that, and he told his doctor about it, and the doctor was like, well, you know, it's bad for the lungs, and it's not good for you, and blah, 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 blah. Well, he said, well, what if I just made the essential oil? Wouldn't that kind of take out the whole carbon bad for your lung? He said, yeah, but he still wouldn't give him any kind of uh, prescription for it. And now this is back in, you know, almost, well, I think it was in 2000, and right around there, anyway. So, you know, I made the movie, but details sometimes are escaping me if you want to know all the details watch the movie healing cancer with cannabis you look for the one hour and a half version uh if you don't find it right away if you find a half hour version that's not the one it's the third the first third of it but watch it uh, there's some other stuff online you can see that i've done these are all no budget you know i just grabbed the camera and did some editing and and so the, there's other ones called uh canada's new oil men and you can and that's all related to the cannabis story and the Rick Simpson story because I mean the people around Amherst the people that were supporting Rick many of those people they suffered greatly uh, a lot worse than Rick did and uh, and their story's never been told and I'd like to tell it one day 
Um, but I'm telling you, I'm dealing with some, uh, I'm dealing with some people that are injured. Injured. Like, uh, the stuff that, you know, the, the, the system put them through because of their belief in this medicine. And I mean, here we are now, like five years, when I made that movie, I had a hard time getting work after that because for a little bit, because the producers were shutting me. You know, it was just, it wasn't accepted yet. And then since then, I've had producers come to me and and even CBC being all interested in this. And this is who we originally pitched the idea to. Of course, though, once it got to Montreal, CBC had had the same idea magically that we had. And I found out because the people who were going to be in my documentary were calling me and saying, hey, guess what? CBC is coming here tomorrow, dude. It sounds like what you were going to do. <laughs> Yeah, it sure did. But anyway, I'm sure it's just a big coincidence. But anyhow, documentaries have been my life for a long time, and it seems to be just what I like to do. I went to Peru a couple years ago. I really wanted to make a documentary on shamanic medicines. And then uh, through synchronicities and whatever, I met... Uh, this guy Lee McGinnis from uh, who played a part on Trailer Park Boys and like I said my friend was now working on Trailer Park Boys so he hooked us up I went and worked on the trailer and uh, for the Tripping with Lee movie and then they hired me to direct and, and well make this film for them you know what I mean like Lee doesn't know how to make a film he's only been in front of the camera and they didn't have money for a big crew so they happened to find the guy who could shoot it and direct it and do all of it and let alone, I mean, this trip was like so unplanned. It's, it's, that's almost part of the funny part. It didn't make a movie, but, um, I mean, we literally got dropped off in Lima, a place nine million people, nine million people in Lima at midnight after 20 hours in a plane with nowhere to go until the next day at three o'clock. Let that all sink in. That's, it's kind of like somebody just dropping you off in the middle of, of New York City and you know with 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 a ton of video gear on your back we had nowhere to go and but luckily our liaison there was a friend of Lee's and uh, and right away this guy grabbed us he was there with his friend who was a taxi driver so that was you know that was kind of win-win but they just scuttled us to the car and they're like dudes you're not in Canada anymore they're like this is not you know you can't be running around with like gear in your back and stuff you're gonna get killed so anyway a couple hours later uh, we finally found a place uh, and we were able to relax 20 hours in two continents you know we were tired man we were tired um, but we, were, we lucked out, we found a place, and then the next day, you know, and we had lost a third of our money at the, uh, on the exchange, because they had calculated the whole thing in American dollars, and then uh, sent us off the Canadian money. <laughs> so that was really, that, right off the bat, we had two-thirds of, we only had two-thirds of the funds that were not to start with. You know, we didn't have much of a per diem per day and stuff, like we really had to watch what we were doing. Um, anyway, long story short, we found out that it was going to be raining in the jungle, which we were supposed to go to, and we're talking El Nino, you know, sink you into the dirt, rain, which I saw it later, we, I, I even posted some on Steven, if you look, that rain is like,